Yeah, thanks, Jason, and welcome to Westminster, where the new class of 2019 are slowly settling into Parliament. And the Prime Minister is keen to be seen to be getting straight down to business, especially on Brexit. And it seems one battle is already underway over the scheme that will replace EU grants in Wales after we leave. Well, one council leader has told Wales Live the new Conservative government must now give details on how much money Wales will get from the shared Prosperity Fund. And there's tension too over who should control it. Paul Martin reports. So what you need to do is print off the jobs back mm -hmm. and then you can tailor your personal statement okay. to the different points of like we showed you the other day. In Swansea city centre, one example of what EU funding is spent on in Wales. We provide a range of support both to individuals who are unemployed and are looking for work, uh, but also individuals who are already in work and are looking to progress into uh, better or more secure employment. I'm someone who obviously wants to do something with my life, and you know, I went back to study. So, you know, a scheme like this was very, very essential to me because, you know, they kept me motivated. The two jobs that I'm hoping I'll get it was uh, through here as well. So last four to five months I struggled like for a job. Now I got the job uh, because of better job, better future. So now I'm very happy and I'm very positive and confident. This scheme has a year to go on its £7 million four-year funding package from the EU. Um, critically for us, that, that funding that we've got at the moment is enabling us to deliver this support. Uh, so if that support is not available in future, um, we'll have to look elsewhere to see what funding might be on offer. So um, at the moment, that level of uncertainty uh, is proving quite a problem for us in terms of long-term planning. This is the Welsh Government's European Funding Office in Merthyr. Under the current system, the money and broad priorities are decided in Brussels, while project selection and monitoring is done here in Wales. The UK as a whole puts in more to the EU budget than it gets out, but Wales is different. It receives far more in funding from the EU per person than other parts of the UK. So how the replacement system is going to work after Brexit really matters. Uh, on, the, on the positive side, the funds have certainly helped to mitigate the industrial problems we've had over the years in terms of unemployment, in terms of new skills. That's been to the positive. On the downside, they've been hugely complex, very bureaucratic, very difficult to use. And therefore now we have an opportunity to create a more simplified system which is easier to use. No one has any idea how the new Shared Prosperity Fund, as it's called, is going to work. There's been almost no discussion between Wales and Whitehall about the shape of these funds, who will manage them, how much money is involved. Back in Swansea, which has done well from the current regime, the local council leader is concerned about the future. The Conservative manifesto gives a commitment to replace the European funding with at least as much again. Is that a good enough guarantee for you? No, it's not. Uh, we were promised the tidal lagoon, we were promised electrification. All of those things are featured in previous Tory manifestos. So until I get confirmation from a government minister saying how big the fund is going to be, what the criteria is, how much money is going to come here and what we can use it for, I will not be convinced. Those are the really important questions that, you know, the new government in London has to answer. Following last week's election, one Welsh Conservative MP suggested the new fund could be paid directly to local authorities, cutting out the Welsh government. Ministers in Cardiff oppose that. They want to make the decisions on how the money is spent themselves. Oh, I think the Shared Prosperity Fund could be the single biggest battle initially between Wales and Whitehall if the Conservative government were to manage the funds from London, they would be literally undermining the devolution settlement in Wales. It's a big early test for the relationship between the Labour Welsh government in Cardiff and the new Conservative government in Westminster. 
Paul Martin. Well, the new Welsh Secretary in that UK government is Simon Hart. He's been speaking to our parliamentary correspondent, Mark Hutchins, who asked him more about who should be in charge of that money, the Shared Prosperity Fund, and also the relationship between the UK and Welsh governments. I want to have a positive relationship uh, uh, with Cardiff. In the end, we both have the uh, same objectives. We, still, we both want uh, the best for the residents of Wales. Um, that is best achieved by us actually working together. I think that uh, voters in Wales, whichever party or, that they prefer, want to see us um, get together, work together, come up with a sensible solution for the problems and challenges that we face. As far as I'm concerned, that applies absolutely to the relationship that I would like to have between here and Cardiff. Now, one key test of it will be post-Brexit and this shared prosperity fund which will replace the EU funding. What guarantees can you give about the level of funding and where it will go and who will decide? Well, I, again, I think there's a, you know, there's a temptation to sort of use this as an, as, a, as an excuse to say there's going to be a massive row between Cardiff and London. The fact is we are talking about a shared prosperity fund. We are talking about a good news story. We're talking about a post-Brexit uh, period where there are going to be decisions made about funding in the UK and in Wales by politicians who are elected by voters in the UK. That is a significant step forward, and I think there's a, that that's an exciting opportunity. So can you guarantee that the money will stay the same, that those areas that have been receiving the funding won't lose out as a consequence of Brexit? Well, I can't go into the individual detail. So you can't no, Well, no, who could? Who could? Well, you possibly um, could, uh, as member no, of the absolutely, government. Absolutely not. Um, what I can say is there is going to be you know, significant benefits as a result of this period which we're just entering into at the moment. And that is going to be, for the first time in living memory, uh, decisions about that funding are going to be made by people who are directly accountable. That is a, th that's a huge step forward. I don't think, I don't think we should interpret that as risk-ridden or negative um, uh, uh, in any way at all. But who will decide, the UK government or the Welsh government, as to where the funding will go? and how it is divvied up? Well, look, we're here to respect and honour the devolution settlement. Um, there is going to be no situation that I can see where one or other party is going to be strong-arming the other in order to make some cheap political point. The fact is, between UK government and Welsh government, we have a really good opportunity to work together, which is what our voters and our residents want, in order to distribute anything that um, uh, the, the benefits, if you like, of this no, transitional period we're into um, in an appropriate and accountable way. That, th to me, I, I think if that, is, if, that, if that translates into the opportunity for a political dispute, we will have failed. But you won't leave it up to the Welsh Government. You want to say in this? Well, I, 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 I just say again, I would be absolutely, you know, sort of strenuously boring about this. I can see no situation where Mark Drakeford and I would have grounds to disagree uh, about the shared prosperity fund. Now, that will require, uh, I think, some flexibility on both sides. We, we don't want to be dogmatic about it here. And I'd be really surprised if he wanted to be dogmatic about it in Cardiff either. Because the moment either of us do that, actually, it is neither he nor me who are the sort of casualties of that. It is business in the economy in Wales. Now, the point which I hope, and I'll be speaking to him shortly, we can agree we have a shared ambition, positive ambition in that regard. And I don't want sort of petty Cardiff Westminster politics to get in the way of that. Because there has been a suggestion that perhaps the UK government could go straight to Welsh councils and bypass the Welsh government in determining how the money is spent. Well, Would you do that? Would you well, consider that? The, the, the respect that we owe and will show to our elected colleagues in Cardiff um, will be ever present in any decisions we make. The idea that we are going to sort of chuck away years of a, of a developing devolution settlement just to make a point like that is highly unlikely because what would it achieve? Let me put to you a point made by Rob Stewart, leader of Swansea Council, saying we were promised the tidal lagoon, we were promised rail electrification. Until we have guarantees, I will not be convinced. Uh, he knows and I know that uh, the tidal lagoon situation was not about the principle of tidal lagoons, it was about the deal that was on offer. His point it's is he can't be convinced about, about EU funding or, or well, replacement for EU funding coming his way. I, I think that's a. I think that's a little bit cynical, frankly, uh, and and I think that you know there is no doubt that there are going to be some significant benefits arising out of this uh, whole process, and and uh, I don't think that he should assume now that it's going to be anything other posi than positive for Swansea either.
The new Wales Secretary, Simon Hart. Well, joining me now, Labour MP Stephen Kinnock, Plaid Cymru's parliamentary leader, Liz Savile-Roberts, and former special adviser in the Wales office, Lauren McEvitt. Welcome to you all. You. Um, Stephen Kinnock, first of all, is this going to be a fight, do you think, over control of this purse string? I'm profoundly worried about the Shared Prosperity Fund. There should have been a consultation launch last year. That disappeared. Uh, there is going to be an attempt by the Conservatives, I'm sure, to have a power grab and to offer less money. One of the advantages of the current system with the EU is the European Union uses data and facts to decide which regions uh, should receive the funding and how much. There's a real risk with the Conservatives. It will become pork barrel politics. They will just find their favoured sons and daughters to give this uh, money to rather than actually being driven by need. And I'm the chair of the all-party parliamentary group on the Shared Prosperity Fund. And our motto is uh, not a power lost, not a penny less. And we will be holding the government feet to the fire on that. But isn't it all about keeping it simple and making getting that hold of that money simple and maybe going from the Westminster government over to the Welsh government down to councils? Is that the simplest it could be, Liz Savile Roberts? Well, I think the first thing that's, that's worth noting is I'm sure that uh, Labour First Minister Mark Drakeford must be regretting having handed back the 24 powers that would have given him greater control over this. But the great tragedy, of course, is seeing that Wales will be losing the European structural funds, which were there specifically to address inequality and poverty. And we'll be moving into a situation where we're looking at politicians, whether they'll be here in Westminster in the Tory party or the Labour government in, in, in Cardiff, who will be looking to buy their own favours. And this will be a real tragedy okay, for some it, of the areas the of West Wales and beneficiaries care Wales. where the money comes from? They want their hands on the money. And whether it comes via the councils or whether UK government or Welsh government, does that really matter? What we need is money that actually has an effect. And if we're going to move into a new politics where it's effectively used to buy votes, what we'll see is that the, the complaint that we have from the North that Labour are investing where it suits them best, we're now going to be caught between two pincer effects, Labour buying votes on the one hand and Tories on the other. And this is a real tragedy for the needs of Wales. OK, your, your former boss, uh, the MP David Jones, suggested over the weekend that, yeah, let's go straight to the councils. You know, why do we need to go via the Welsh Government? Now, that would be a power grab. That would be undermining devolution lots of people would argue I'm not entirely certain that it is because we're in a new paradigm with the money being allocated by Westminster rather than having anything to do with the EU anymore so I'd say that it's not a power grab it's a it's a reassessment of where power lies uh, within that settlement as it is but when it comes to sending money to councils I think that conservatives are naturally skeptical of the Labour administration in Cardiff's ability to spend money well in Wales they so, have a so track record of spending control of the Welsh government for example it'd be fine yes Right, so this is pure party politics. No, it's <laughs> we need the Welsh Government to be adamant that they'll be spending money in the way that will most benefit the largest communities in Wales. Well, you and could at the be moment, in control there no one day and then you'd reverse the, the decision, would you? No, I mean, that's not what we would do at all. My understanding of what, for example, um, Andrew R.T. Davis has said in relation to how um, agricultural funds would be spent is that they'd be matched pound for pound um, as b from before the, um, our departure from the EU. I can't imagine that it would okay, be much what, different what, what, in other areas. What is going on here? Because there's also a row brewing of the M4, you know, suggestions that maybe the UK government could go ahead anyway. Who needs the, the go-ahead from the Welsh government who haven't uh, been forthcoming on, on delivering no, they the haven't. changes to uh, the, the road on, on, around Newport? Now, Mark Drakeford, First Minister, uh, has said today that there's an assault on devolution here and he's accusing Boris Johnson of doing that. Mark Drakeford, in having control over how roads are funded and roads are built within Wales, has a responsibility to the wider United Kingdom for the major arteries of the UK to remain functional. The M4 has been dysfunctional by the Bryn Glass Tunnels for decades. We sent down the borrowing powers in 2012 to allow for the expenditure on behalf of the Welsh Government to make those changes, and they have done nothing. OK. I mean, that, that is a fair point. OK, it's devolved. But they're not delivering. That's what uh, the government here would argue. Look, the Welsh government took a decision based primarily on concerns around climate change. You know, we can't just keep having all this rhetoric about the fact that the world, the planet is burning and then not um, put that into reality in terms of our policies on the ground. But I think there is a really dangerous constitutional precedent here. We now have a Tory majority, a thumping majority, and I think we'll end up with possibly a kind of elective dictatorship where uh, Boris Johnson and his uh, ministers will be looking to steamroller 
over devolution that, settlement. That, that's they will be words, looking so, to. Hang on, yeah, a, I mean, I, I've, they, they've won a, uh, an they've elective won an election. dictatorship. Yeah, an elective, won... yeah, but it's untrammeled powers. They have a majority of eighty, and of course, we can't. I, I bitterly regret that. But the question is, will he well, be magnanimous? Was Tony Blair's government uh, an elected dictatorship? No, we created devolution. We founded the Welsh Party. Quite the opposite. We were magnanimous. We understood the need to pull the country together. I'm not sure that that's in Boris Johnson's DNA. Let's see what happens. OK. Um, Liz Savarobis, are you, are you worried about what's going on with devolution here? Or is it just, let's... People don't care about the processes. Let's just get things done. And that seems to be the attitude of Boris Johnson. We have our own parliament in Wales that whenever it's gone back to the people of Wales, that has been strengthened. We're now seeing that tested by this deeply populist government. We should be able to make these decisions for ourselves. We should be able to make decisions on the economy, on the infrastructure. And let's bear in mind, of course, that the Tory government has failed in, in, in electrifying the railways that we desperately need in Wales as well. We should be... We, there are going to be questions over the, the Shared Prosperity Fund. And there will be questions also about the funding of agriculture in the future. Now, I see... I have watched ministers previous ministers possibly in the Welsh office, looking to be able to trade this for their own powers. Now, this can be dressed up in a way of saying it gets it closer to the people. But absolutely here, we have our own parliament in Wales and that must be strengthened. The tragedy okay. is that it has been in the hands of Welsh Labour for so long and they have become simply administerial over it. Now, okay. there, we I should agree. be... We okay, should let, be let, seeing the advantages of the Parliament in okay, Wales, let, and I look forward to that happening. Briefly look at another aspect yeah. of, of development of Brexit. This idea of making it illegal to go beyond the transition period, mm. that makes a no deal highly likely, does it? Um, I'm not sure, to be honest. I think that it's possible that it does, but by and large, I think the aim is that it will be done within the, trans within the transition period. Um, I think it sets a nice uh, tone within the electorate who clearly voted in one way, and that was for this to be over, um, that this is the direction of travel for the government. They want this to be over as soon as possible. OK. And in terms of your party, Stephen Kinnock, you're going to... How are you going to deal with Brexit now? And what sort of leader... What, what, what should your lead, next leader say on Brexit? So I think there's two choices when you do a trade deal with the European Union, either based on convergence or divergence. Boris Johnson seems to have done a deal now with the ERG and other hardline Brexiteers, is Brexiteers in his party that it has to be based on divergence. A divergence-based deal is going to take a lot longer than one year to do. That is for sure. So then we are looking at a cliff edge, no deal Brexit, which is a disaster. What okay. he could do, much more sensible, yeah, but what should you to pull the country just back just together is, to, is to have a soft Brexit based on the Norway okay. style And who option. offers that? Is it Lisa Lisa Nandy for you? Is, is she the leader? Uh, I think uh, Lisa is an excellent candidate and she's uh, the one candidate, as far as we're seeing on the so-called shortlist now, who called it right on Brexit. She's always been opposed to a second referendum. She saw the writing on the wall for our leave voting areas and, and I, you know, politics is about judgment. And will you stand? I have no plans to stand. That's not a no. Um, you, you're backing Lisa Nandy? Uh, we need a candidate who saw the writing on the okay. wall on the second referendum If she doesn't... Issue. If a, a joint ticket with Lisa Nandy, is that a, po a possibility? Or if she doesn't stand, would you consider it? I have no plans to stand for either of the leadership positions. At the moment. As things stand, <laughs> I need to see what the candidates are saying, set their stall out, then we'll see. OK. Keir Starmer writing in The Guardian tomorrow. We must be a broad church again. <laughs> Yeah, look, I, I think Keir's incredibly okay. talented, very smart, but I think there is an issue around how do we as a party reconnect with our Leave voting areas? And I think we need a candidate who understood uh, okay. where things were going before the ref uh, after the referendum. And Liz, Brexit is going to happen. So briefly, your party stance now on Brexit, is it transformed? Are you going to just go along with Brexit rather than oppose? We will be holding this government to account at every step of the way. 11 months is not possible to have anything save a bare-bones trade agreement. The, frankly, lie that Brexit is done is going to become very apparent very quickly. And we will be making sure that the voice of our Welsh communities is heard as effectively as we can here in Westminster. OK. First day back in school, a good one? I would say very mixed. I'm delighted to be back myself, but I am absolutely crestfallen and shell-shocked by the result on Thursday. OK. Well, thank you very much for joining us here on Wales Live, all three of you. That is it from me in Westminster. It's certainly going to be a busy week here, Jason. And then I think MPs, like most of us, perhaps, will be very glad to see Father Christmas. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs>